Wednesdays on the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, April 10th. So the moon is going to be in Taurus all day, continuing to help ground us, anchor us, slow things down, make us a little bit more present and focus on the smaller things in the run of our day that brings us a sense of happiness, joy, safety, security, and stability. Of course, we're still very much in this new moon eclipse energy, but the moon in Taurus has been a helpful aspect in kind of bringing us to a slower pace. Again, kind of able to anchor us in for us to take a good look around for us to really be in alignment with what it is that we want to build what we want to create what we want to bring to life from here now there are 14 different aspects here today very busy day in the cosmos especially coming out of a very slow day in the cosmos here yesterday tuesday as we kind of fell into that calm after the storm energy 14 different aspects we're definitely going to see a major shift in our inner realm where our thoughts where our emotions where our passions and desires are concerned out of those 14 10 of them are going to involve the moon so we definitely have a lot of triggers, a lot of activations pushing us to realize where it is that we want to move forward, what has to change, what we have to transform in order to kind of smooth over a lot of the bumps in our physical realms that we've been made very aware of. So we kick the day off with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money who rules over the Taurus energy that the moon is currently in. Venus is in Aries energy. She's having a change of heart. She's very very straightforward. She's very direct with not only declaring what it is that she wants, needs, and desires, but she's able to actually go after it. Now, that being said, we're not really in a time of action. However, we're in a time of decision. We are building, cultivating, fanning the fires within, really understanding what it is that we want to align with so that when we're gifted with the green light go ahead, which by the way, end of April, end of May, we are going to know exactly who and what needs to stay, needs to go, and what exactly we want to pursue from here. Venus is going to be making a semi-square with Uranus, the Great Awakener, in Taurus energy that, again, Venus naturally rules over. Uranus is the great awakener. He likes to shock us, likes to wake things up, shake things up in order for us to see new methods, new ways of doing things, new paths, new options, new opportunities. A semi-square is a little bit of a tension and conflict point in order for us to realize that we're going through some growing pains. Growing pains always come before the actual change of circumstances, change of events. And because Venus is involved, this has to do with the change of heart the change of wants, needs, and desires, the change of worth, the change of values, the change in the idea of what it is that she wants to build in her life. Again, adding to happiness and joy and safety and security and stability in her physical realm. So because this is a little bit of a friction point, we're not seeing the path clearly. We're not understanding clearly what needs to be done. We're not really as open to the changes, to the transformations as we need to be at this point. Instead, it's kind of a little bit of a confusion state. It is lacking clarity. And at this particular point, I think that many of us have realized what it is that we need to do in our physical realms but aren't really prepared to do it and so we're trying to kind of talk ourselves out of it so to speak because again requires us to boss up requires us to be accountable and responsible for our own lives our own actions and we're just trying to build the fire the spark the flame within us to build in this confidence to build in this certainty but right now we're just not feeling it the moon in Taurus is going to semi-square Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy that is all about our dreams, creativity, spirituality, intuition. This particular interaction isn't the greatest. It is going to put us in a situation where, again, the moon in Taurus wants us to stay present, wants us to very much connect to the physical body, to the five senses, to our physical realm. Well, Neptune in that Pisces energy wants to move into La La Land, wants to kind of avoid the physical realm, wants to avoid the present moment and just live in this happy-go-lucky state of mind, of being, where we're conjuring up a new goal, new vision, new dream. 
this particular interaction can get very overwhelming, the tug of war, if you will, between our headspace and our heart space and our awareness, if you will, is being kind of, I'm going to say pressurized in order for us to realize where it is that we're holding on to greatly to this present moment, to the here and now. And we're not open enough to understanding what needs to change, what needs to transform in order for us to align with the vision, the goal, the dream that we're currently trying to conjure up. The moon is then going to sextile Mars. So this is a beautiful interaction. Mars, of course, the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire. In this Pisces energy, we are trying to emotionally, spiritually, intuitively connect and align with a new truth, new mission, new purpose, new quest. Now, the moon interacting with Mars in this way is a beautiful energy because, again, we're building an inspiration. We're building in creative force energy. We're building towards a common goal, a common theme. But again, we're not in a point of action at this particular moment in time. But that doesn't mean that we're not stabilizing in our emotions, building our excitement, building our anticipation for this green light go ahead to actually make moves to actually see some progress. Now, the moon in Taurus is then going to sextile Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities, systems, structures, disciplines, who's also in this Pisces energy, again, helping us to kind of deconstruct the old belief system, the old vision, old goal, old dream attached to the old version of self trapped in that old reality. This particular energy is a beautiful one because it kind of anchors us in. It brings a little bit of a reality check, but not in a harsh kind of in your face kind of way. What we're realizing is that we have a new vision. We have a new goal. We have a new want, need, and desire. And of course, Saturn provides us with the seriousness, the discipline, the willpower needed in order to start building towards that goal, that vision, that dream. The Pisces energy, the Taurus energy, it's earth and water, which means that this is an interaction for emotional growth for an epiphany, if you will, on where it is that a new vision, a new goal is asking us to build something new in our emotional realm that will then be seen in our physical realm when we're gifted with the green light go ahead to actually start putting the pieces together. This is essentially understanding now the blueprint of the bridge that we have to build in order to get us from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. The moon in Taurus then going to make a interesting interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. The North Node trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us on this independent solo adventure in order for us to build within the relationship with thyself. You have to know thyself in order to heal thyself. The nodes of the moon are responsible for this eclipse portal gateway that we're still very much in. And the moon interacting with the North Node is a certain realization where it is that our inner realm is changing, where our emotions are changing, where our ideas, our goals, our visions are changing. And because of that, we're seeing a lot of growth. We're seeing a lot of ability to heal the identity wounds, the belief system wounds of the past that has kept us very trapped, very limited from actually moving on into a solo adventure, into a new quest, into a new mission, into a new purpose. The sun in Aries energy going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. Now, this is a positive interaction. However, it is going to highlight the struggle that we're currently dealing with. The struggle that many of us are kind of sitting in right now is the fact that we want to bust out. We want to make some changes. We want to do something different. We want to be independent. We want to kind of go on this quest, this self-discovery, if you will. The hesitation is, is that it's out of character. The hesitation is, is that it requires us to actually move away from some of the relationship dynamics that we are closely connected and attached to, which again is out of character. What happens when you are making a change, especially in a very, let's call it comfortable, familiar relationship dynamic, is that the other person is going to assume that there's something wrong 
right? Anytime anybody breaks a routine, anytime that anybody introduces something new that isn't a part of the normal energy exchange, the recipient or the person on the outside listening to us as the individual declare that we want to try something different automatically goes into egoic programming default. What's wrong? There's got to be something wrong. We go into anxiety. We go into fits. Now, here's the thing. All we're doing right now is understanding where it is that some of our relationship dynamics have been limiting us from doing what we need to do for ourselves, doing what we want to do for ourselves, doing what is want, needed and desired for this soul mission, for this soul purpose. And so the struggle that we're kind of dealing with here is that we want to go our own way. We want to be a little bit more independent. We want to do things for ourselves and try something new, but we're hesitant to declare that because we don't want to upset the people that of course are in our lives that may step back and really assume that something is wrong. Why do you want to go off by yourself? Why do you want to do something all alone? What is wrong? What is changing? And again, that hesitancy, that resistance to rocking the boat is why many of us have found ourselves in a state of paralysis. So this is a good aspect, believe it or not, because realizing where the struggle is alive and well is really putting us in a situation to see the clarity, to see where it is that we do feel trapped, where we, we are being called to a new path, a new passion, new purpose, new desire. And where it is because of our, let's call it programming and conditioning, we're hesitant to do things for ourselves because we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to upset the people that we love. We don't want to create a disturbance of any kind. Those people pleasing days are over. Have we not learned anything from these eclipse axis between the Aries and Libran energy? The Libran energy has got to go. That's the South node. The North node, that Aries energy has got to become a little bit stronger, which is independence, which is this solo adventure, which is putting our individual wants, needs, and desires ahead of the goals, of the vision, of the dream, of the partnership, of the team, of the group, of the relationship. So out of this struggle, we will gain clarity. That's why it's a positive interaction. What follows that is a beautiful interaction between the moon in Taurus energy and Jupiter in Taurus energy. So the moon is coming up to bumping into teaming up with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. This is hype energy. We are building towards realizing new options and opportunities to not only change ourselves, but to change the world around the reality that we're currently living in. This is a renewal in our hope and our faith and our wishes and our dreams. This is a renewal in our optimism and our confidence. This is a pick me up if you will, cheering ourselves on to do the right thing, which happens to be the hard thing, which means putting our own wants, needs, and desires ahead of the relationship dynamics, ahead of the group, ahead of the team. The moon and Taurus then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. Chiron was a major key starring role player under this particular eclipse, pushing us into spontaneous amounts of healing, pushing us into this new identity, pushing us into a realization that we cannot continue to be who it is that we've always been and continue to do what it is that we've always done and expect a different result other than the results in which we've already got. And so the moon kind of interacting with Chiron in this way, this is building ourselves up. This is recognizing the new wants, needs, and desires. This is is recognizing the new identity. This is recognizing the new vibration and frequency and stabilizing in it, feeling good about it. Now, here's the thing. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires is going to come up to bump into team up with Saturn. Both of them are in Pisces energy. If you downloaded the moon guide, we're a part of that particular class where we did a deep dive, not only in the eclipses, but in your individual chart and kind of understanding where these energies are amplifying the major changes in your life, you would know that Mars and Saturn were already very close together under that new moon total 
solar eclipse in Aries energy. Now they're coming into the direct conjunction with each other. They're teaming up. What do we know about a conjunction? We know that it is just as much as of an ending as it is a beginning. So here we have the God of War and the Lord of Karma coming together in this Pisces energy, which is a renewal energy after the purification, after the cleansing, after the healing, after the transformation within our soul and our spirit. Mars is trying to get aligned with a new mission, new quest, new purpose, new truth. Saturn trying to deconstruct and really watch collapse the old limiting belief system the old version of self, the old realm and reality, the old structures that had us held back from actually going after what it is that our soul mission, our soul's potential needs us to pursue. So this is going to be an intense interaction, first of all. Secondly, what it's doing is it's kind of bringing a little bit of a reality check. It's showing us where it is that we have to really throw down double down, bet on our willpower, our discipline, our determination to actually make a change, to actually see things through. There's a certain level of responsibility that comes into our awareness. There is also a certain awareness of feeling trapped, feeling blocked, feel feeling held back or confined in some kind of way. Again, Saturn restricts us. This is actually a good thing because Mars who wants to go balls to the walls and never really makes it towards his actual goal because he burns himself out long before he actually gets there. This is kind of like Saturn pacing Mars saying, okay, we have a new goal. We have a new vision. We have a new dream. If you actually want to see it come true, here is the plan, the path, the strategy that you must walk. Here's the determination level that you have to have. Here's the motivation that you have to have. Here's the willpower that you have to have in order to actually bring something new to life. So this is going to renew us in our purpose, in the path, in the direction that we want to be walking. This is a certain, I'm going to say, I don't want to say harsh reality check because it's not harsh. It's just realizing that a lot of the reasons why we have failed in the past is because we didn't take the proper time, the proper, I'm going to say, perspective to realize what is actually required of us to close the door on old self, on old realities, on old structures and actually build something new. If you were building a house, you cannot lose motivation to build said house halfway. Once you build that foundation, once you start building that structure, you're committed. You have to see the project through. And so we're realizing where it is that we have to slow down, where this is probably going to take us a little bit longer than we were hoping for, where we actually have to keep ourselves in check so that we're not burning ourselves out long before we actually see the goal post. Um, what we would also want to realize is that we can feel a little bit frustrated right now because Mars, again, has ants in his pants. He's restless as, as F, waiting for that green light go ahead. However, this is a good time to, again, keep ourselves in check. Remind ourselves why we're doing this. Remind ourselves of the passion level, the excitement level, the level of inspiration and motivation that we actually have to make these changes and actually visualize what our lives could be like, what they could look like, how we could feel if we actually seen this project through. So again, I want to call it a little bit of a struggle, a little bit of a reality check, but out of this, we're starting to realize the proper steps that need to be taken in order to actually bring these goals, these visions, these dreams to life. The moon in Taurus then aligns with conjuncts Uranus, the great awakener, also in this Taurus energy. So again, another ending and beginning point. What I love about this is that Uranus being aspected in a positive way is bringing the clarity bring in an aha moment, bring in an epiphany, bring a change in our mood and our attitude and our perspective to understand what it is that we want to change, what it is that we want to transform in order to make our lives better. This will likely open us up to new ideas, to new epiphanies, to new perspectives that we can't unknow. Once you know this, you kind of have to try it out. You have to pursue it in order to see what you could actually create by doing something different. 
the moon is then going to interact with the sun in a very positive way and any time that the moon and the sun are coming together there's an emotional awareness an epiphany a change of heart a change of mood a change in path a change in direction so the moon of course in this taurus energy trying to keep us stabilized in our emotions making small little adjustments to our mood to our attitude to our perspective to our options to our opportunities while the sun is shining a bright light in this aries energy what can we start what we can we jump into what can we initiate where can we start building where can we start jumping into this brand new chapter this brand new cycle again no moves are being made but we are building the excitement we are building a comfortable perspective on the small changes that can be made in order to align with the greater grander plan the greater grander goal Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Taurus energy going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. We love this. This is kind of like this new identity is coming forth. This new change of heart is being anchored in. This new realization on what it is that we're not going back to because we've kind of gone through it. We grew through it. We've addressed those particular wounds. We're attempting to repair them. We're attempting to heal them. We we have a new sense, renewed sense of faith, of trust, of excitement, of inspiration. And we're really feeling ourselves at this point. We're starting to build ourselves up in optimism, in confidence, in self-esteem in order for us to actually feel like we are well equipped and well prepared to do what we have to do to make the changes, the transformations in our physical realm. The moon in Taurus then going to make a semi-square, creating a little bit of tension with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Aries energy. So again, this is about realizing that we're having a major change of heart. We're having a change in who and what we actually want to pursue, what we want to keep as familiar as possible where there are changes that need to be made but again that moon in taurus is trying to stabilize us ground us slow things down we're not as peachy keen as venus in this aries energy to make those bold moves to make those bold declarations of affections of change of emotions of wants of needs of desires and so the friction that's coming here is that there is this urgency there is this i'm going to say building of fire energy coming from venus in this aries energy who just wants to kind of blurt everything out be straightforward be direct do what you got to do in order to make a change to make a transformation but the moon in taurus is like pumping the brakes like no we're just gonna you know we're gonna sit with it we're gonna see if this is what we actually want again the taurus energy likes to resist the changes even though that we know that we have to make them in order to get a different result we're just pumping the brakes right now so there's this restlessness kind of building in our heart space because we feel like we know what we want to do what we need to do where it is that we need to go from here what it is that we have to declare what it is that we have to ask for but the moon in Taurus is just like you know what let's pump the brakes let's just sit on it let's sleep on it let's just see if anything changes within us before we go ahead and start creating drama the moon is then going to make a positive interaction with mercury mercury the ruler of the mental plane ruler of information communication how it is that we express ourselves of course is retrograde in this aries energy and although this is a positive interaction this is putting us in a particular state of mind, a state of being to realize that yes, emotionally and mentally speaking, we are getting on the same page. We understand, especially with Mercury being retrograde, that's probably not the best thing to do to blurt out these new realizations, these new changes of heart, these new changes of affection, these wants, needs, and desires until Mercury actually goes direct. Again, there is this realization Mercury's headspace has us very aggressively in this Aries energy trying to kind of sort out what is no longer in alignment with ideas, with thoughts, with feelings, with projects, with goals, and what is now coming into alignment because, of course, we jumped into a new chapter with this eclipse energy. So we're really trying to kind of rewrite our inner dialogue, our inner narrative. We are in alignment with our heart space, but that moon in Taurus needs us to slow 
slowed things down before we verbal vomit on everybody and kind of declare things that we're not so sure of and then create a mess for ourselves that we're going to have to clean up once Mercury actually goes direct. So this is like an inner realm realization that, yep, I'm feeling a certain way. Yep, this is exactly what I want to say. This is exactly what I want to do, what I want to pursue, but not right now. We're going to hit that pause button. We're going to back burner this particular energy for a better time.